forever because this is an extension of it and you really do need that first part to understand this part. Except to say that the early church in the last part of the book of Acts gives us an example of the five laws of stewardship in a positive example. Ananias and Sapphira introduce us to three other laws of stewardship and they do it through their bad example. We can learn from the good and we can learn from the bad. What are the next three laws? The first one is the law of single-minded motivation. Single-minded motivation. Ananias and Sapphira introduce us to this question, who do we give to and why do we give? Do we give to be seen? Do we give to be well thought of? Or do we really genuinely give because we love to give and because we love God? That's the core issue that's at stake here, a very important issue. Now, I have to take a moment and tell you about our policy here at Moody Church. At Moody Church, our giving is secret. Uh, we don't publish a list of who gives what. You know, I, when I was growing up on the farm, uh, we went to this little uh, church where there were maybe uh, 30 people. If you had 40, you had a crowd. And at the end of the year, they used to put up on the bulletin board of the church the giving of all of the people. And I remember, you know, even as a boy hearing about some farmer who owned four or five sections of land, he gave $300 that year. Oh, what a sacrifice, $300, and God gave him a bumper crop. You know, if we did that here at the Moody Church, I think giving would increase. <laughs> I think it would. Publish it on the Internet. I want you to know today that uh, sometimes we do know what people give when they tell us. And that's perfectly fine. There are people who sometimes want to discuss their gift. Maybe they want to know where it's going to be designated. Maybe they want to know how it's going to be given. Maybe they want us to know. At times people have come to me and said, you know, I'm praying about what to give. And so for all of those reasons, we may know what someone gives, but it is always initiated by the giver. And that's perfectly fine. But as a policy, there are two reasons why we have giving here as a secret. First, for your benefit. For your benefit. We want to minimize the possibility that we have people like Ananias and Sapphira who give to be recognized, who give to be noticed, who give because they secretly hope it will lead to a higher office in the church. And so what we do is we say, thank you for your gift, but we do not know that gift. And what you give is known to one or two people responsible for the accounting and to God. There's a second reason why we do it. Not only for your benefit, but for our benefit as a staff, because we don't want to treat you differently based on your giving pattern. Now, that's the church policy, and it is held to. Now, the downside, of course, is people who don't give anything absolutely love that policy. They love it. As I mentioned last week, it may come as a bit of a shock and most assuredly a disappointment to know that there are hundreds of people who attend Moody Church every Sunday, members, not dozens, but hundreds, who give nothing, nothing at all year by year. And these people bless them. When we hear about what God is doing over at Kids Club, they clap just as loudly as the people sitting next to them. Now, we don't know who they are, but they, I'm sure that they clap just as loudly, even though they've not given a dime to the ministry, they've not given to missions, they've not given to the opportunities that God has given us here, and yet they, they uh, are pretending that they're on board and they're rejoicing with everyone else. <laughs> See, the problem with that is it's not just because we need the money, though as I mentioned last time, it'd be good to have more and we think of what we could do. But that's not really the issue. They are cutting out the possibility of God rewarding them openly. You remember Jesus said, let your giving be in secret and your Father will reward you openly. Give God that privilege. Well, my dear friend, this is Pastor Lutzer. And again, we're talking about giving because we're speaking about Ananias and Sapphira, and my message has to do with giving God our reputation. You see, 
what they wanted to do is they wanted to look good. And specifically, they wanted to look better than they were. And as a result, they lied about the land, didn't they? And they kept back some of the price. Now, they were not under obligation to give everything that they had sold the land for. They were not under obligation to give it all to the church. Uh, they could have withheld some of it. Their sin was in pretending that they gave it all. Pretending. Well, my friend, this business of money is very important, isn't it? Let's not use money to enhance our reputations. When we give, let us be willing to give in secret and to trust God to reward us openly. And of course, in doing that, we shall understand what it means to have secrets with God and to be individually blessed by Him. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Dr. Erwin Lutzer has brought part one of He Owns Our Reputation, the fifth message in his series, When God is First, taken from the book of Acts. Tomorrow, more on your money and your reputation for how you use it. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church to help you understand God's roadmap for your race of life. The eight messages in this series can be yours on CD, cassette, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Ask about When God is First when you call. Take time to visit our website at runningtowin.org. And don't forget, Running to Win is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Find out what happens to Ananias and Sapphira. Join us for tomorrow's Running to Win.